Um, I'll, I'll sort of dive straight in because, uh, you know, we've, we've had a, a long day. What I've found um, quite stimulating and thought-provoking. Um, I mean, Jeff's in the morning sort of really got me thinking about a whole lot of stuff and, uh, and, and Stephen's as well. And, and well, uh, you know, Carrie's fantastic. What a day. Uh, shame I have to sort of let it down, really. Uh, um, so... Um, uh, yeah, yeah. So, so hopefully, uh, link in with with some of that. Um, uh, and as, as it says on the tin, I um, uh, want to give you a sort of home survey standard update. And and um, it's got uh, mine and Larry's name on it because really uh, we've been going around with the um, RICS on their roadshow over the last well since November, wasn't it? Um, yep. uh, quite a few. Uh, has anybody been to any of the RICS roadshow? Right, OK, so um, tr trying to bring us some of that in uh, to, to uh, uh, this session today, but also uh, try and reflect on uh, and include some of the discussion and really useful stuff that's appeared on the Surveyors Hub uh, Facebook page. So, so you know, in, in terms of the sense of uh, uh, making it part of, well, our community as, as, as I see it. Um, and and I'll, I'll sort of generally lead the session, but, but Larry will uh, dive in with um, sort of other anecdotes. Pertinent uh, comments. Pertinent comments, okay. Those are the ones. Yeah, yeah, that's right, okay. Right, okay, so, so, so there's the objectives, really just to update you from our point of view uh, about where our ICS are, we think, with, with the home survey standards. Um, uh, and and uh, maybe adjust some of your uh, current practice so you can be compliant with this that comes in on June the 1st and familiar with some of the current in issue uh, uh, debates that we've come across. Now, we have got some limited handouts for you um, because on your memory stick, um, you will have a number of freebies that, uh, 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 you know, we're, we're, we're giving you for nothing. Well, you know, part of the fee, I suppose. Um, uh, we, uh, on, and on the um, memory stick, you should have, um, well, well, what we call a contract letter, a patch contract letter um, associated with uh, home surveys. Um, you've also got some site notes um, well, we call them uh, uh, property information uh, uh, notes uh, uh, about what we think is a compliant set of records that you should keep. Um, and uh, we've also got a condition rating protocol and um, uh, that's been updated for the new um, home survey standard and, and also a copy of um, a, an old book now, um, the um, home survey sample phrases. Uh, survey writer sample phrases that go back uh, year, years, uh, but you might find of some use. Um, so, so really, um, and, and uh, managed just laid out a, a, just a, a few paper copies, um, so you can flick through them uh, 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 on the table. They're not meant to be one per person; they're just there, so, so you can see them uh, 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 as I refer to them. Um, so hopefully th th those two will go together reasonably well. Now, the home survey standards, uh, as I say, um, it, 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 it is effective from June the 1st. Uh, so theoretically, uh, all, all the other um, uh, products will fall away. Uh, sorry, I think we call them archived um, from that point of view. So all the professional statements, uh, all, all the stuff that Graham wrote uh, over the years um, will, we'll, uh, a bit like the Japanese knotweed guidance notes, uh, be, be archived and then brought out uh, a few years later or, or, or whatever. Um, now, we, we know, and most of us know, that RICS are working on uh, uh, new products, um, new standard products. I think they're going to be called Home Survey uh, level one, two, and three, um, uh, although uh, not many people have seen them. But our ICS are consulting at the moment. Apparently, they're setting up practitioner panels to get some feedback on it, and, and work is, is really uh, progressing quite well. As, as well as uh, this thing called the RICS Toolkit, which uh, stands, sits outside the standards but is aimed at giving people like ourselves uh, uh, more day to day. Uh, guidance uh, and information and help around terms of engagement, around uh, the sort of tools that we use and all of that sort, and, and websites to look for for environmental information 
and the like. Um, now, we don't know when these products are, uh, RICS products are being published. Uh, we have no information about that. Um, so, I, I thought what I'd do is, is talk about a plan B. Uh, you know, and, I, and, and I suppose there, um, uh, in the unlikely event that the new ones aren't available, um, uh, uh, um, uh, I think make three assumptions. Uh, and I think basically what myself and Larry have picked up talking to people from RICS and, 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 and whatever is, is that RICS aren't going to be going around caning people uh, if you carry on using your existing RICS products. Um, uh, and uh, they're unlikely uh, to take action. Um, and, and, and also, um, I don't know whether Gra Graham agrees, but, but it's not that different to the Surveys of Residential Properties Guidance Note from 2013. So, so we're within spitting distance of being compliant, I would argue, um, uh, theoretically anyway, with, with, with the new standard. So, so what we've suggested... Is, is doing a patch to help you be compliant. So just, was anybody at Birmingham surveys in practice? The the, one of the RICS compliance officers was there, and in effect, he said, what is in the second bullet point? He said, there's no way that we will be chasing anyone. He, and he sort of inferred, well, we've come up with this guidance, and it's coming into force on the 1st of June. It might have been a good idea to have had the toolkit before then, but that isn't the way it's worked. So we're not going to be chasing you. That's what he said. And, and I suppose looking at it, um, th this is the contract, isn't it? If, if you use the standard, can I just ask who, who used the RICS product? Okay, so so there's quite a few still do, and uh, m most of the contracts between you and your client, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, is is about uh, um, you know description of home buyer service, the um, uh, um, you know the terms of engagement that sit w within the other one, and also the information sheet. Um, now the the thing, uh, the fix is the contract letter, and so it's just basically making sure that uh, you use that. A flexible uh, thing that you should be writing anyway uh, as individual practices or, or, or practitioners um, uh, to, to, to make it compliant um, and, 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 and so, so that that's uh, so on uh, the memory stick you, you've got a, a, a phantom sort of a contract letter um, that you might find useful but just a bit of a warning there and, and I'm, 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 I'm Never ashamed to say, just to cover our backsides, um, it's up to you to make sure that our um, suggestions in that contract letter suit your practice. Uh, and so, so God, I don't want you phoning me up in six months' time saying, well, I've still got sued, mate, and I used your bloody letter. Um, so it's up to you to make sure that you, you've been, um, uh, uh, you know, appraised of its uh, uh, appropriateness. OK, so, so I'll, I'll refer to that from time to time. But look, the, the, the main difference is, um, I, I think, between uh, what, what most people, a lot of people do now, the surveys of residential practice and, and the home survey standard, is, is around some of these issues. So, so what I'll do, and, and um, uh, I, I aim to finish by quarter past four, uh, but if you've got to leave earlier than that, I understand. I mean, I want to go home too. Um, um, so, um, uh, you know, uh, pl please feel able to leave. <laughs> so, w working with the client um, and the, the contract letter extract here, um, uh, what, what you'll find on your memory stick is, uh, and if you're Archers fans, you know what I listen to at seven o'clock uh, every night. Um, but, but really, it, it's just... Um, it, uh, a lot of you uh, will, will recognise uh, this terminology or approach. But um, in terms of the H, uh, new, the new standard, I suppose there was a lot of discussion when we're putting it together about be creative with communication methods. Um, so, so if you use WhatsApp, uh, messaging or, or, or whatever, um, I, I think it was going back to what Marion said earlier about uh, young, younger people uh, who, who the norm is, is quite different to what we, have made, uh, the older ones in the room, may have grown up with. So, so uh, think about that. Um, and, and also uh, give the client what they want. So, so yeah, we could do it PDFs, we can do it digital, but if they want two hard copies, sent to their home address in an envelope, 
then that's what they want. And, and that's the other focus of the new um, home survey standard, I think, is establishing clearly what they uh, uh, particularly uh, uh, want. And uh, th these other things, transparent with conflicts of interest. So if you're taking a, a payment from or giving a payment uh, to, to agents for referrals and things like that, you've got to make sure you're up front with it. Probably you already are. But, but I think these are some of the things that, that are, uh, my view is that the home survey um, standard um, will, will, will be bringing in. Uh, and then uh, there's the extract that, that uh, points out, really, uh, about um, helping your clients uh, make the choices. And, and just to remind you here, um, this one created hours of debate in the working group. And, and uh, one might say it's a bit weak. Um, but, but if uh, anybody worked through panels... Well, um, you know, and if you work through panels and, and you're taking third party instructions and you turn up um, and, and it, you know, what, what you're being asked to do doesn't match, uh, isn't best suited to your client's interest or to the property or, or your own knowledge, etc., um, then uh, you've got to, uh, well, the standard <coughs> says contact your, your client and advise them what would be this most suitable one. It doesn't tell you what then to do whether you carry it out, whether you refuse to carry it out, or whatever. Um, so, so, but I, I think the emphasis there is to... Well, this is the best, I think, and, and I understand the dilemmas RICS face. This is the, 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 the most satisfactory compromise, I think, uh, that, that we could reach at the particular time. So, so if you work through third parties, uh, you, you might want to look at that. Um, and uh, findings of the report. Um, uh, th there's things there, it's all a bit blurred there, but, but have a look at the 4.8. But, um, you know, RICS members should set aside adequate time to discuss the findings of the report. And, um, and, and, and here, look, um, uh, this is uh, uh, Larry's latest client uh, 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 that he's on, he's on the other end of the phone there. Um, uh, but, uh, but yeah, uh, but FaceTime, WhatsApp, you know, um, you, all, all of those different, uh, you know, methods of communicating with people uh, we, we want to think about. Uh, use it. And, and I suppose here it goes back to what Jeff and, and, and Stephen and, and everybody else have been saying, I suppose, is time. You know, time, making sure uh, that you've got that uh, adequate space to do that. And um, this one, um, bringing in, I, I mean, I'm not sure um, uh, how you record those discussions. But again, we had a lot of debate about if, if, if you're giving that uh, discussing time with your clients, make sure you don't set up your own liability at that stage. Is, is, you know, I've, I've heard so many tales of surveyors saying, oh, yeah, yeah, well, you've you, you got to, in, in, in the medium term, be prepared to uh, recover the roof. Well, how much will that cost? Well, you know, I can't really say, but 10 grand should do it, you know, and things like that. So, so I suppose it, it, it's just making sure that you've got some, um, you're aware that you, you, you can't step outside your terms of engagement and you've got some records of it, uh, whether a few bullet points, uh, we had a lot of debate about whether you can tape it, do you have to ask people whether you can tape it or not, will that be intrusive? And I'm sure you've got your own ways of, uh, of doing that. Uh, but, but what we've put down here, and um, uh, uh, our property information file is a total crib of what Alan Appleby uses, but don't tell him. All right, hopefully he won't recognize it all. Um, but, but this is just the, the, the last page in, in what is quite a thick um, sort of uh, file of, of, of pages and, and space to, to, to write things. Um, but, but I think uh, maybe what myself and Alan would defend is actually it's a property information file. It's not just site notes. It's to capture, um, and, and, uh, you know, the, the discussions with the client. It's also what, what Alan does and I think is brilliant. He's got a little checklist that he says, right, before I drive off, have I locked up? Have I uh, made, you know, looked at this? Have, have I uh, got record of that? And th then Alan, um, I'm, uh, I'm sure he, he'd, he'd butt in if he wants. Uh, uh, you know, just, just before he has that conversation, uh, well, well, just before he leaves site most of the time, 
It doesn't matter whether this appeals to you or not. Um, I think what RICS uh, would say uh, on audit is, is where is that record? And, and, and I think that's in, not only to, to uh, you know, answer RICS's bureaucratic um, demands, but also to, well, to cover yourself. So if uh, you were to receive a complaint, it's down there somewhere in your files. Um, th there's a lot of stuff here about working with the vendor. A whole list of things, of the things you should ask uh, 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 the vendor about. And I suppose here, um, oh, sorry, mate, I've, I've sent it all off to the legal advisor. I haven't got any of that. Um, I, I suppose the thing is, is, is like I was just saying to somebody earlier, something I strongly feel is, is that when the legal advisor, if it has been sent off, uh, analyzes and reviews all of these things, they're, they're only going to come back to your client at the last minute, you know, probably the day before exchange. Whereas some of the issues in here, if your client knew earlier in the process, then, then maybe they might decide, do you know what, I'm not going to wait another six months, uh, uh, you know, uh, sorry, another six weeks to, to, to get all the legal uh, searches done or whatever. I'm, I'm not happy buying an house that hasn't got building regs on, on the rear extension or whatever. Now, now um, of course, it, it, it's going to be difficult, um, uh, you know, uh, getting these from, but I think what the standard says is you've got to engage with it. So, so just think about building it into your processes, not only just asking on site, but uh, I, I don't know, who, who writes to vendors for appointment times and access? Yeah, or, 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 or phones them or, or, or whatever. Um, you know, I, I suppose, again, it's, it's trying to build that into your process to get that information as, as upfront as possible uh, uh, for your clients. And, and again, there's a space on the information file for uh, comments about, uh, you know, discussions uh, uh, with the vendor. And, and the other thing we'll come back to is, is asking permission for taking photos using a, a, a camera pole. And, and, and things like that. that that's uh, something that's come out. And talking of which, um, uh, uh, if you're on the hub, uh, you, you, you would be familiar with this. Um, but um, here you go. I, I asked on the hub, uh, you know, what, what do people think? And uh, amazing. Uh, if you mention it in the T's and C's, where do you draw the line? Uh, are, are you talking about the type of pole you use, the height of it, how many times you use it? And... Um, <laughs> somebody a, a forlorn attempt please don't mention it phil please don't make it part of our kit um and that's appropriate just don't tell the client i just use it for my own decision making purposes and things like that. tell the client in your blurb but don't put it in your t uh, terms of engagement and never use one on level twos but always on level three helps us differentiate and, and that's, that's an interesting way of saying this is the added value, uh, isn't it? Um, uh, so, so anyway, and, and use appropriate quick... Yeah, so, so that, that was what somebody else was saying. Uh, you know, I'm not going to tell them what I use. I'm just going to say I'm going to use appropriate equipment. Now, um, obviously, I can't give away... Uh, the identity of the person who posted this, because John would be really upset. Um, uh, but but th this is uh, what one hub member uses, and uh, you know to to, to try and uh, uh, be clear. And, and and yeah yeah. So um, uh, and there's always those issues. Well, will your client always expect that or whatever? But you don't always need to use a camera pole, do you, to to, to look at uh, you know uh, things that are potentially concealed. And interestingly. Um, uh, a, a couple of weeks ago, um, and I don't know why I was going on about this, but I'm sure the same, uh, you, you suffer the same thing, your, your, your friends or your, uh, your children's friends say, Phil, I'm buying this house and, and uh, I've just had this survey done. Could you have a little look at it? Explain what it means. Uh, and so I'm, I'm getting more cautious about what advice I give on these things these days. Um, but anyway, a building survey was carried out of our ICS building survey of this particular property. Um, there's the front and there's the rear. 
and, and it's got a, um, uh, a loft uh, extension, uh, full height at the back and a, and a couple of roof lights at the front. So this is from Google um, Satellites. Um, the nature of service, th this is, um, it's terrible, isn't it? Um, I've, I've hopefully uh, taken all the identifying uh, marks out of this one, but, but this is from the firm. They said, outer surface of the building will be inspected from the ground, blah, blah, blah. And, and I think um, uh, a lot of us will fam be familiar with that. Um, and then, uh, if there is safe and ready uh, uh, um, if there is a safe and readily available means of access to those parts of the exterior in excess of three metres above ground level, this will be referred to within the report. Now, I find that a bit, bit cryptic, um, but, but actually, I think that's saying, look, we'll use anything <coughs> we want to use. Um, and, and if we do use it, we'll tell you in the report, uh, which is interesting. Um, uh, uh, but under the limitations to inspection, at the start of each section, um, uh, that, that, was, that was put in. Um, uh, uh, and then they added this additional sentence, it was not possible to see the top of the chimney stack and therefore defects may be present that we cannot see. So that was used twice in the actual uh, report. But interestingly, they showed you photos of the top of the wind chimney stack. Um, and and I, this, uh, it's not a drone. Um, I'm, I'm convinced that it's a drone. Uh, uh, it's not a camera pole. I think it's a selfie stick. Sorry, a short camera pole. Uh, if, if, uh, it sounds more professional, doesn't it? Um, and and uh, there's a problem, I think, that if you are using these fantastic technology, that can enable you to look at the top of the... Uh, uh, chimney stack or, or, or whatever then then be congruent uh, don't contradict yourself don't don't muddy the waters that that would be my view and, and again um, I, I think he, um, it, it was a he uh, he took that one of this chimney from from that roof light there and um, uh, that uh, concealed and this is brilliant service don't get me wrong I think that's brilliant service for your client because otherwise you wouldn't have been able to see it um, and and I think the reports uh, uh, drew the right conclusions from this, so the client was given uh, the, 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 the right advice. Um, so, so um, you know, think about, um, and we've got some examples in, in uh, the, the patch uh, letter, but, but just, just make sure that, that everything fits together nicely. Um, now, I, I could understand that person on the hub who said, look, I use one, but I don't tell the clients. Uh, and, and I don't use the photos, they're for my own purposes. I can understand that. But, but if you do use the photos, make sure that your terms and conditions are OK. And, 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 and that's the one uh, I, I thought of is, is interesting. Um, so I, I, I like this, this, this phrase. But, anyway, but all of this is just work in progress, and, and that's the thing that Marion has said a, a, a number of times today. This is the only biblical quote I've ever used, um, because I thought, uh, and somebody said, don't hide your light under a bushel. And do you ever do that? Google, well, where did that phrase come from? But, but it's the same sort of thing. It, it's don't hide. But, so if you do use one of these... Then, then, then maybe use it in, in your blurb, use it on your website. This is my USP. This, buy me and you get this stuff. But, but make sure, uh, well, you don't necessarily have to tell them the type of pole you use or the height of it or that you use it every time. So, so uh, uh, just um, uh, uh, think about uh, that. And, and, and just make sure that if you are seen on your website holding these things, um, that, that, that you, uh, uh, if you can't use it, then make a note in your site notes. Now, here, um, uh, uh, has anybody come across InfraReady? It's a website for, for cameras. Now, you probably can't read it back there, but InfraReady, um, and, and uh, you probably see it there, ghost hunting equipment and digital infrared cameras. So there you go. There's a nice, diverse business plan, isn't it? Um, so, um, uh, but, but here, health and safety uh, for camera poles. Interestingly, um, it's sizest. So, I, 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 you know, um, I don't know. Who's below five foot six inches? Okay, you can't use camera poles, uh, not, not to this size. Um, uh, do we measure wind speeds? 
because this one can't be used at 50 miles an hour force four, whatever that is. Um, um, uh, watch out for cables. Um, you, you're talking about carbon fiber poles and electric cables. Um, and uh, keep your feet together. Um, the pole can be angled as shown, but should be firmly placed between the user's feet. And so, so I, I don't know, almost pole dancing at this point, I think. Um, uh, but, but there you go. And lanyards. And I was asking John, a lanyard round your neck or whatever, clipped onto the pole mm. to, to, to help you steady it. Um, uh, so, so all I would say is it's down to you. Uh, and, and like any other bit of equipment, we were talking earlier, weren't we? We, we don't want to end up on some sort of, um, you know, a wheeled vehicle to put this thing in. Um, uh, but but it, it, it's worth it's worth thinking about. So so anyway, th there's some some thoughts a, a about that. Um, and the other thing is uh, in the standard in in the contract letter, is maybe forewarn your client of the things you're unlikely to be able to see. Uh, and, and and my thoughts has always been if if lofts are deeply in insulated or, or, or whatever. Uh, I suppose the idea is is to make sure that your client understands why you couldn't get in the loft and isn't shocked by it. Um, so, so uh, um, uh, again, I think the standard calls for that. Uh, and, and, and so th think about how, in, in your terms of, of engagement in the contract letter, you can express that. Th this is the other thing, extract from... Eight, uh, uh, and we, we do this, um, uh, uh, you know, already to greater or lesser extents. Um, but, but this first part tends to say that, that on level ones and level twos, the amount of research, uh, uh, desktop study type of thing that you do is similar for level one and two, but for level three, um, it, it's likely to be more extensive. So, so I think the standard often tries to open out... Um, uh, uh, and differentiate between the different levels. And, and Appendix C lays down all of those. And, and I don't think there's any new things in there, uh, anything different from what was in uh, the Surveys of Residential Practice back in 2013. Um, so, uh, but I suppose what, what's, what's changed, and this is um, something myself and Larry say have been going around the country, uh, we're doing exercise on, on um, a property in the region where we're sitting, and this one was in uh, Bristol. Um, so, so I'll pick on a property um, and, and we say to the audience, does anybody live here? Uh, or do they know it in any way? And uh, we, so far, oh, I didn't, forgot to tell you, uh, in Bristol, after I'd done this, a bloke came up and said, oh, I did a home buyer on that two years ago. I said, oh, you should have told me. You know? I said, uh, everything OK? He says, no comment, and walked <laughs> off. Um, so, so, uh, but anyway, um, now, I, I suppose what, what we do is just go through all the stuff um, that you can find out from satellite, from 2D, from 3D. Um, uh, and this is the stuff that's readily accessible. There's nothing on prescription, sorry, prescription, subscription, or prescription, I suppose. Um, and, and like, you know, uh, I suppose we go through um, some of the issues you can pick up on, on uh, you know, over time using that, that calendar one. Uh, uh, you know, uh, th there's the garage, there's the uncapped chimney. The garage is still there in 2012. No garage there. Uh, and uh, new windows fitted between 2.12 and 2.14. Um, uh, you know, uh, I, I don't know, next door's garage draining onto... You know, you can go on and on and on, and I often do. So, so what we're trying to raise here is, is what do we do with this stuff? Uh, what do we do with, with, with this um, uh, sort of information? Um, it, is, it, is it a distraction or is it like a, 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 a pre-survey? It, it does it enable us to go um, uh, onto sites, uh, uh, you know, pre-armed with this knowledge? And, and what we're planning to do at Blue Box is to start releasing... Well, we're, we're going to start um, offering uh, to people uh, under a, a name of a case study club of, of not only environmental uh, desktop searches like this, but a lot of other problem-based uh, uh, type exercises. Uh, and uh, we, we'll let you know 
in, in, in the near future about this, but where we'll post up a, a problem or an address or something like that, and then uh, through um, maybe Zoom or, 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 or um, you know, a, a video uh, conferencing situation, um, see, see if we can uh, all, uh, you know, problem solve and, and uh, you know, as a sort of a online CPD, uh, distance learning sort of thing. So, so yeah, uh, and um, uh, th there's, a, uh, there's a chimney stack in, in, in uh, chimney breast in the house, uh, but, but, but not chim chimney stack out there. Uh, uh, and again, historic maps, yeah, everybody, looks, everybody looks at these? Yeah, yeah, and um, old maps. Uh, does anybody publish these in their reports? No. Uh, yeah, but don't, is my advice, because if you read the copyright, um, so, so the, for me, these are about the site notes, unless you buy it. And, and um, something to flag up to you here is streams that disappear. And why do they disappear? Because they go into culverts. They don't really disappear, so they're still there, but they get built over. And as you go through the years, uh, the streams do, this, these streams do disappear. So under there somewhere is, is a culvert under a load of sort of neighbouring houses. Um, and geological maps, uh, what, what use are these? Um, I don't know, but, but linking into uh, the cold authority and, uh, and the like, uh, you can start, uh, you know, get, getting some sense of it. And then the coal seams. So, OK, you, you can't use these to, to gauge what subsoil there is there, you know, and risk of foundation movements or shrinkability or whatever, but it does say, eliminate. that means there's coal close by. Um, um, so, so, uh, so, so watch out for that. And the Coal Authority, fantastic, aren't they? Zoom in, lovely like that. Um, tick a few of those boxes, and it changes to that. And, and uh, um, I was asking them, uh, you know, uh, again ab about these red crosses. And what surprised me today is is that um, these are updated. Mm. I thought they were just there, mm. you know, for all time. Um, so, and, and flooding. Um, and the restrictions on flooding and, uh, you know, surface water uh, and, and all of that sort of stuff. Even the terrain view um, on, on Google, get your idea of, of, of um, valleys and, and peaks and uh, highs and lows and, and where the water goes. Um, and oil and gas fracking, um, uh, so, so maybe not so much of an issue now. Maybe that's dropped out, uh, out of the scene. Um, but Historic England, I, I find their maps are fantastic as well. That's a, one of the best mapping systems around. And, and it just help you see where those streams are and where, where they disappear and where the culverts are, are likely to be too. But more importantly, a list of building cons conservation areas uh, 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 and the like. And, and again, a, a very good mapping function there. Uh, Radon. And this is another issue, like the coal, uh, the coal authority, is uh, radon doesn't stop there. And, and if you're nearly surrounded by radon areas, um, then, then, yeah, you've got to be worried about it. And, and um, uh, Jeff, I know, uh, on the hub, anybody seen Jeff's post on the hub? He's been monitoring his own house for radon because he's in a radon-affected area. And, and uh, the actual radon in his house is nowhere near the action level but he and, and the thing is is here in this one kilometer square there's probably one property that's been noted at, at this level so so that you know, affects the whole square so so you know maybe in some of your well maybe level two whatever you want to do if you spend was it three pounds 69 on on getting a property specific radon report and build it into your fee uh, uh, in some areas of the country, maybe that's very useful. Noise maps, um, there's extreme um, noise maps. Uh, this is a road, that's the M4, I think, or M32, can't remember which one. That's the rail, um, and uh, you know, I'm not sure I got it here, but, but there's one for the airport as well. Um, uh, go into the property addresses, and again, we don't do legal searches, but a lot of, um, uh, 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 towns have, have, have got, you know, what, what's been going on, um, uh, you know, even down to, um, uh, um, oh, uh, fires, um, red wine warmers, room heaters. Room heaters. Yeah, thank you, yeah. thank you. Yeah. That, that's yeah. all. And, 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 and there is, is, like most 
uh, councils have the map, don't they, uh, with, with um, building regs or, or certainly planning. Uh, so, so, and, and uh, I suppose that, that's what, you know, what's the point of all that? And, and I think the point of all that is it can embellish, it can deepen and broaden um, uh, your, your actual inspection. Um, it can um, help you uh, with your report uh, uh, as well. Um, and, and the question we got asked on, on one uh, surveys in practice is, is do I have to um, uh, check it on every instruction? My view is no. If you know your area and look at this, websites that are unlikely to change, OK, historic maps, uh, 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 well, listed, I suppose that could change. So that one will have to go over there. Um, this one, I don't think geology is going to change much. Um, but, but now I've got to push that one over there because um, that does change. But, but, you know, noise maps, radon, flooding, they're all the time changing. Um, um, so, so some of them, if you know your area, yeah, you, you know, you'll have a file or, or a record of it, um, but, but others that you know uh, you do change it you need to check um, and, and then um, uh, th there it is um, uh, in the property information file uh, and then that I think is compliant is is that I make no formal inquiries about contamination or other environmental dangers but I will check the information on appropriate websites uh, that are freely available of public now that's in there because it's in the standard OK, the standard talks about publicly available websites. Um, so I think our terms of engagement have got to reflect that. Um, but this one has always been in there, if I su suspect a problem. And you, you don't say, oh, flooding was within 15 metres or whatever, because those flood maps are just bloody useless, aren't they, really? And, and there's so many caveats in the information they give um, that the, the, you've got to use it with a pinch of salt. So I, I would never say, oh, you know, imminent flood or whatever, but keep it generic. You know, my review of publicly available information on the websites um, uh, reveals that there's, uh, you know, a suspected uh, high flooding level or whatever. Um, and then you can give them the... Um, uh, the link to the website uh, or recommend that they get a flooding, you know, a commission a flooding report um, uh, as soon as possible. Um, um, so, so, something like that. And energy matters. Um, can I take three more minutes to do this? Uh, and, and then I'll, uh, I'll finish. Um, uh, you know, and again, level one, uh, well, on all levels, um, uh, keep an eye out for, for problems that you see. Um, uh, energy related and report on them but, uh, but level one uh, get the EPC and state it uh, level two um, uh, um, level two uh, get the EPC state it and then check check for obvious discrepancies and and that might be terms of engagement that reflect that um, so 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 uh, that that might be appropriate and uh, so what is actually required and again this this Bristol property right move is fantastic isn't it even though it's a, a maybe a few years old, old um, all, all of this sort of stuff can help you make some sort of assessment of, of what's likely to be there maybe or maybe not um, and uh, just, just really to show that the bathroom you can't see here has got an inclined uh, uh, ceiling so, so uh, if there's any insulation in there, it's probably in, uh, w within the ceiling, encapsulated within there. Um, but, um, oh God, sorry about this. I thought I'd have a bit more time. Um, it, it, here's a load of um, uh, thoughts uh, about uh, what, what these can tell you as well. Um, so again, it's about um, uh, pre-arming pre you with information here. Um, but this is the most important thing, and, and I think, uh, what should we do with this? At level two, at home buyer's report under the new survey standard. I think, first of all, is, is what, what's the average EPC for this country? Yeah, 60, 62, something like that. And there was a report on the BBC the other day about the appalling low level of energy efficiency of our existing stock. And if we're going to meet our 2050 whatever uh, commitments, then we've got to start tackling that. Um, but uh, you know, that's the first look at the improvement measures. Uh, is the floor area right? Often not. Uh, but, 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 you know, it can give you a guide. But, but I suppose the thing is, 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 is if you're looking at a place, you know, if you've got a sense of what is 71 square metres and you think, bloody hell, it's bigger than that. 
or smaller than that, then, then I suppose it's checking for obvious discrepancies. And, and here, re read it in your own time, but, but you know, all, all of a sudden here, um, uh, is internal insulation all right? Um, and, and in the roof, pitched insulated. OK, what's that? Oh, that, that, that could be uh, the offshot, the back addition, you know, that slopey ceiling in, in the bathroom. And, and again, looking here, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, is it well insulated? Um, uh, you know, on, on, sorry, there's one with in, internal... Uh, that's right, that's the one to check, isn't it? And, and that's probably in the refurbished uh, back edition, offshot, off uh, uh, make sure that that's been done. Uh, and, and then, yeah, and, and just things like solid floors. If, if there's a solid floor under the back edition, you know, try and link energy issues with with maybe condition-rated issues. Is it sulfate? Is it one of those rubbishy, scullery floors that, uh, you know, are likely to be damp and, and things like that? Um, and uh, on level three, I think here, um, uh, what they're saying is, are these appropriate? Uh, and if it's a listed older building, then there's a whole range of uh, guidance and, and information uh, and uh, you might want to be wanting to give your... Now, um, if, if you're doing a home buyer report, where do you put it? And, and um, uh, you know, maybe depending on what template you do, <laughs> you, you could, as a, as a fix, bung it under section D. Um, uh, you could bung it under E9. E9 is fantastic, uh, uh, as well as F9. Bloody anything goes under there that doesn't fit anywhere else, doesn't it? Um, uh, or, or common service. Do you know what? It doesn't matter as long as it makes sense and your client knows where it's going. So that's the fix for the standard formats. Um, on uh, a building survey, there's always been section K, which I find few people use properly anyway. Uh, ever since it, it was it was brought in, um, okay, uh, that that's a bit of a rush there. Um, okay, so so well, I, I just want to finish there. Um, so no, so, so uh, any feedback on any of those documents you see, please let us know because uh, what we want to do is update it and 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 have it within the hub community for you to use or or not use or, or, or whatever. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you.